well. You can actually inject it anywhere. And the major areas that you need to be avoiding are, are, are the tear troughs and also the lips. So um, as you see, we, we've injected a number of areas. Um, it can also be injected, not in this patient, but it can definitely be injected in the, in the nose. Um, the techniques that are usually used in the nose, we probably might show it this a little bit more on the advanced side. Uh, but at the same time, the nice thing about it is that it is great for those who are still afraid to have any surgical procedures to be, you know, to be performed on their nose, or at the same time, they've had plastic surgery on the nose and they've developed certain problems you know, post-surgery. Uh, for example, certain defects and so forth that can also be corrected using the calcium hydroxyl appetite. Uh, that, but that's something else. We're not going to be doing that today. Okay. Now, in terms of Roberta here, however, we're going to be injecting a little bit of the nasolabial folds. Anytime you inject the nasolabial folds, uh, you, you have to also tackle the marionette line. So you, this areas over here have also, they also need to be injected and we're going to be doing that. Plus at the same time, she has a very, very minimal pre-jowl uh, defect going on here and over here. We're going to kind of sculpt it a little bit, make it even sharper. Now she's had this done before and she's had it done before using calcium hydroxyl appetite. Uh, and we're going to be doing the exact same thing with her today, which kind of touch it up a little bit more. And you know, once you touch it up, it, it'll provide her with great, great cosmetic, uh, cosmetic effect. Okay, so we're going to do the nasal labial folds now first. All right. So the nasal labial folds. One of the approaches is that you can start off from the uh, nose itself, right, for where the crease is, the triangle over here, the soft triangle or you can actually inject from the lower going up. It all depends on you know, different techniques. Personally, I, I go both ways, but if you have the filler material with lidocaine, you want to start from the bottom. Because what happens, once you inject, you inject, this is the retrograde injection, I'm injecting as I'm coming out. And then you stop. So once you move up a little bit, this area has become anesthetized by the effect of the lidocaine. And then you inject over here. So this one is slightly, should be slightly less painful. Mm -hmm. Perfect. All right. Massaging is also very, very important here. And we use a very, very small amount we were talking about 0.2 right here, and that's all she's gonna need. Because we've injected the cheeks first, the mid cheeks and also the, the cheeks itself, uh, she requires a very, very small amount to be injected in the uh, nasolabial folds. I'm gonna continue doing the same towards the marionettes, and we've shown it before. This is the area, the insertion is gonna be right here. You inject, I see the needle here. I will inject a little bit of the material as I'm coming out. And we've injected just around 0.1 of the material. She needs a little bit more. We're dealing just the corners of the mouth. We are not injecting her lips. So now I'm going to move towards the other side and we're going to do the jack going in, got a little bit coming out, you stop and then you move a little bit up, that area should be anesthetized just a little bit. And then finally we do the marionettes. The marionettes, you basically look at the angle, follow the angle, that's where it is. Insertion is right here. Feel the needle. Very 
nice small amount. Fantastic. All right. So we're done mainly with the nasal labials. We're gonna, I'm going to ask Roberta to sit up again so that I can reassess the nasal labials. I'm going to also, I mean, she's, she's got a great aesthetic eye herself, and I'm going to ask her whether she needs anything else to be done or anything, or she's completely satisfied or she needs anything more. So, it's true, and, it's true yes. I'm, no, I'm, I'm very happy. So there you go. So you could definitely inject radius in the oral, you know, right on the oral commissures. Once you do that, you may not even need any lip volume. Okay, yes. if the patients are satisfied, you simply stop there. Okay, uh, w whenever I do the chin, I, I always like to kind of uh, have the neck fully exposed. So what I usually put is basically I can either put a pillow or a little towel, like fold up the towel, put it right underneath the neck so that I can actually have the full neck exposed over here and I can see where the defects are going to be that she needs it. Now she is very well chiseled because like I said, I mean, she's had this done before, so we're basically gonna be touching it up. And the way to approach it is, uh, there are a number of ways, but all of them are basically going to be quite on the deeper side. Uh, so I can see that the defect is, going, is right over here. That's the area basically where the different compartments are going to be. This, is, this whole area belongs to the cheek compartment, so it mainly goes all the way down to here. This here belongs to the chin compartment. And there, the pre-jowls, or the pre-jowl sulcus usually occurs right over here, and that's the area that needs to be kind of filled up a little bit. Now. This area can be treated, and we definitely made it less so by injecting the temples, by injecting the cheeks. And now what we're gonna be doing is that we're gonna be injecting this area over here to kind of complete the picture. I personally like to kind of put my, my non-dominant, so I, I like doing this so that it runs very parallel to it, okay? And at the same time, we're gonna be injecting it quite parallelly, but at the same time, more on the deep side, so. We go deep, we're quite deep, we're very, very deep. And at the same time, I'm injecting as I go in. It's very important to do that because there's a huge structure right over here, okay? It's basically a, a large artery, a large vessel, that once it's nicked, it's going to cause a lot of bleeding, it cause a lot of bruising to happen. So, and we want to try to avoid this. I want Roberta also to go outside today and have lunch with her girlfriends. <laughs> So we've injected about 0.4, mainly on this side over here. And as you can see, it's given her that chiseled look compared to the other side. Same thing, quite deep. And always, always, massage is gonna be key in this section over here. Now, this change might not be significant on the camera, but, it, but for the patient who sees herself each and every day, especially a person such as Roberta, who's quite, quite astute and she's quite picky in the way that she looks, uh, she's, gonna, she's gonna, definitely gonna notice the difference between the two sides. You want to be very careful not to inject too much material. You don't want to have too much of a chiseled look in a woman because uh, women basically have softer features than men. You don't want to create that Superman jaw in, in a woman. So you want, to have her, you want to have her jaws sharp and edgy, but at the same time also softer. So you want to try to avoid injecting a lot of material in there. So that's mainly the jaw area. And then I'm gonna inject just a very tiny amount in the chin to kind of give me a little bit more volume. With the chin, I like using the cross hatch technique, so I've injected parallel lines, cross hatching, and cross hatching gives us much more volume, and it's mainly used in the cheek area and also used in the chin area. So I think that is enough for her on one side. We've injected about one full ML. Okay, so that's one CC mainly injected on the right side. I 
I would like to assess her and I, I believe she also likes to assess herself. So let's have her sit up. See, she is more depressed. Right here, it's become yeah. much sharper now. Yeah, yeah. And here, no? here is depressed and here is this. Yes. Yeah. Yeah, he started to be deeper and deeper. deeper, and deeper. Absolutely. Yeah, and also it goes all together and it's more harmonious. Right. Okay. Here is straight. Over here, there's a defect right over here. Okay, it might be difficult to kind of assess because of the shadowing, but you can definitely see that there's that defect right over here as compared to the other side. And that's what we're going to be trying to correct. We, we, we will correct this area first. And then, all right, the same thing, the same thing is this, you know, we, we do the exact same thing. I, with my non-dominant uh, hand, I will put it right where the, uh, where the mandible is. And I'm going to run parallel to it. We're quite deep. I don't want the material to go much deeper towards the neck area. So we're going to try to be as much towards that side as possible. The left side is always a little tricky, just because you know you're using um, your right hand in a place that it's just you know difficult to kind of approach. So now, always you have to tell your patients that this area, because it moves quite a lot, the uh, the mandible is you moves quite a lot when it comes to talking, at the same time when it comes to eating. So, because of the mechanical forces that happen in that area, the chances of bruising is a little bit greater, for example, than the chances of bruising on the cheeks. It's just because of the high mobility in that area. Of course, the, the bruising is less because of, the, um, because of the epinephrine that's injected. Now I find that she's going to need a little bit more, and I injected, I'm, I'm injecting a little bit more on the left side compared to the right. Uh, the reason for this is that you know, some people have you know, asymmetries. It is very important to know that you don't want to kind of say, I injected 0.5 here, I have to inject 0.5 there, no. You inject as much as basically needed to provide you with the best aesthetic outcome in the end. That's the goal. Okay. Whole basic, yeah, I've injected about 1.2 mLs on the left compared to the 1 mL on the, uh, on the, on the right. So there was slightly more. The nice thing about it, about this basically, about the material itself, is that you know there are certain patients who come to you who say that they want a dimple, you know, right in the, you know, right in the mid chin here, and you can definitely do that with the radius. You put a little bolus here and a little bolus there, and it creates that dimple. So it creates that little dimpling effect. Uh, so that can definitely be achieved. However, Roberta wants to be natural. So I always look at her from the top, just to make sure that they're quite symmetric from here. And at the same time, I look at her from the bottom. She's very symmetric over there. Now I've noticed that there are certain small areas of the injections that they might be bruising. Um, you know, you can definitely put a little bit of ice there that'll help with the bruising just a little bit. I usually like to use ice with me. 
um, but you know, for this DVD, we're not we're not using it. But definitely, you can definitely have ice with you in clinic. It takes a little bit of the pain, but at the same time, it also you know prevents bruising from happening. Now I'm going to ask her to sit up for me. Yeah. So, so definitely a, a, a great change going on here. And at the same time, it's not too much. It's no. not. It's definitely not too much. No. It's. It's enough. Good amount. Yeah, it's yeah. enough. It's enough. All right. All right, well, I'm done.